Welcome to Kermit Uncut, coming once again from the beautiful Cinema Museum in South London. I've just been reading a very interesting piece in Sight and Sound, which is the British Film Institute's film magazine. It's an editorial by Nick James, who's my editor in the past. And the piece is called Twitticism, and it's about the effect that Twitter has had on film criticism. It's a very, very well-written piece. Nick starts off by saying that nowadays all film critics use Twitter, and it's very useful. I mean, if I do a film review on Radio 5, or we do a blog here, or I write a review, I almost immediately tweet a link to it, so tell people that it's up there. And what's interesting is, once it's out there on the, the Twitter sphere, other people get in touch with their opinions, and you connect with other film critics. And this is a, a useful tool. However... Nick raises an interesting point about Twitter and film criticism, which is that, in his opinion, Twitter can be used to enforce a critical consensus. Uh, here's what he says. Some critics on Twitter do seriously seem to think it's their tech-given right to gang up and enforce opinion on any given film, to call out those who get it wrong, as if commenting on film was an entirely manichaean business of good, bad, right, wrong, name-calling. Now... This is a very interesting point. Just recently, we did a blog here at Kermode on Cut, in which I was talking to Robbie Collin. And Robbie liked the film Transcendence as much as I did. And Transcendence had opened to some very, very negative reviews. And we were talking about the fact that we were perhaps slightly outside of the critical consensus. One of the things that I like as a film critic is reading other people's opinions. And I don't want to agree with them, but I want those opinions to be argued in a way which is engaging, which is intelligent. I'll give you an example. A year or so ago, there was a piece online by Catherine Bray, a very good writer, about Cosmopolis, the David Cronenberg film. Now, I admired that film, but I found it very hard to like. But she wrote a very, very interesting, and I have to say, pretty convincing argument about the film, saying it was, it was almost Cronenberg's best film. It was, a, it was a really, really fine piece of work. I remember reading Philip French writing about Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate. Now, I've seen Heaven's Gate. I've had two runs at it. I got through it the first time, second time I gave up. I think Heaven's Gate is a stinker, but reading Philip French's defence of Heaven's Gate really makes me think that I must be missing something, that there is something in that film. I mean, more extraordinarily, Michel Simon has written impassioned defences of some of John Borman's movies like Zardoz. Now, I think Zardoz is a total catastrophe, but I can read Michel Simon talking about that film and think... Well, there is something in there, because you're arguing it so convincingly, so eloquently. See, for me, film criticism is not about declarative statements. It's about a discussion. I, I like being on Twitter because I like hearing other people's opinions. I like reading opinions that I don't agree with, but that intrigue me, that interest me, that make me think that there is something to be said that I haven't seen. I don't think that enforcing a critical consensus is a good thing. And if Twitter is used for that, then that's a problem. But I think what Nick James starts off by saying is that it has made an online community of film critics, and that in itself is pretty exciting. As far as other opinions are concerned, bring them on. I want other opinions. I want to read other opinions. I want to hear other opinions. I just happen to be right. <laughs>